So how are we going to collect the sample from the sample population? How are we going to do that? The best way to select the sample from the sample population is randomly. That's not the only way to do it, but if we randomly select a sample from the sample population, then our expectation is that most of the time that sample should be representative of the sample population in terms of background characteristics. If I randomly sample a set of students um, from Wellesley College, I expect that the heights of the students I've sampled will be representative of the heights of all Wellesley students. There are several different ways to select a random sample. When you say you selected something randomly, that actually does not provide all the information that someone would need to know how you did that. So we're going to talk right now about two different ways to select random samples, but there are many more. The most common way, or the most common example, at least in statistics class, um, in terms of selecting a random sample is a simple random sample. A simple, simple random sample is a particular type of random sample. So let me show you graphically what that means before we state the definition in words. Suppose that our sample population has 64 units in it. I'm using a capital N to represent the larger set of units, and I'm interested in selecting a sample of 16. I have the resources to contact only 16 people out of these 64. So there are my 64 people. The definition of a simple random sample is just that I put the names of these 64 smiley people in a hat, and I draw out 16 of them. So there are 16 people who I could have drawn out of the hat. So perhaps those um, people who are now smiling in red are my sample, or perhaps this was the sample I drew, or perhaps this is the sample I drew. The definition of a simple random sample is that each set of 16 units among these 64 has the same chance of being my sample. So these first two rows have the same chance of being the 16 people selected as these last two rows. The set of people who are currently colored in red has the same chance of being the sample as this set. The definition of a sample, simple random sample is that every possible group of that size has the same chance of being the sample. The benefit is that this is easy to do. You put all the names in a hat and you draw out however many you want and it's easy to explain. The disadvantage is that you don't have any control over um, chance imbalances. And what do I mean by that? Well, it could happen that the 16 people I draw happen to be um, not representative. Perhaps if I'm interested in heights, the 16 people I draw happen to be uh, the 16 tallest people. That could happen. There are other ways of random sampling that minimize the chance or eliminate the chance and that you'll get an undesirable sample that's not representative of the sample population. One of those other ways of sampling is called stratified sampling. So again, let's think about 64 people. But now those 64 people are organized into eight strata. And I've here, thought, I'm thinking of those as eight columns, these eight sets of people. And perhaps we're thinking of Wellesley students. So perhaps in my sample population, I have eight Wellesley students who are from New England, eight who are from mid-Atlantic states, eight from the Midwest, um, eight who are international students, etc. And I'm interested in learning about these students. Now, if I did a simple random sample, it's possible that I would select these 16 students in the first two columns and I'd only have students from New England and mid-Atlantic states. But ideally, the students that I select would be representative of all Wellesley students in terms of these strata. And so what I can do if I want 16 students is randomly select by simple random sample two units from each set of eight. So I'm going to put the eight names of these New England students in a hat and draw two. I'm going to put the eight names of these mid-Atlantic students in a hat and draw two. I'm going to do eight different simple random samples such that in each stratum two students are selected and then the set of 16 all across these uh, strata makes up my overall sample. 
The advantage here is now I'm sure that my sample is representative of my population in a very particular way. In other words, as I've developed these strata, I've created them based on characteristics that I care about, and when I conduct my stratified sample, I'm guaranteed to, con to create a sample that's representative of the population um, in terms of these strata. The disadvantage is you have to make the strata, and you have to have information about the units ahead of time that you'd need. I have to um, get information about every student in the sample population um, in terms of where she's from in order to do this. So this is often um, a more costly method in terms of resources. You have to go out and collect the extra information necessary to create the strata, but once you have that information, um, you end up with a more representative sample. There are some other samples I could have drawn. So now, this is not a simple random sample because a lot of the possible sets of 16 smiley faces here could not be the sample drawn by stratified sampling. It is not possible to use this stratified sampling method and then end up with all the students from New England and all the mid-Atlantic students as my set. That's not possible. The definition of a simple random sample is that every group of size, say 16, has the same chance of being the sample. Clearly, this stratified sampling method is not a simple random sample method because that is no longer true here.